Good afternoon, everyone. The package development team for Wirebond and Power has been working on a new package to tackle some current and future technology gaps. Today, I'll share with you our thought process on design, performance, and applications of our new chip scale power transistor packaging format. It all started with us asking the question, wouldn't it be cool if we could drastically increase the conductive density of the package? And why can't we remove troublesome in interfaces to make the package more simple and perform better? My name is Sean Bowers. I'm the Vice President of Wirebond and Power Package Development at Amcor Technology. And today we're talking about chip scale power transistor packaging. Before we get into our chip scale power transistor packaging, let's broadly examine the package categories for power semiconductors today. When we look at packaging for power products, there are two main areas of interest. First is the discrete power packaging with only a single MOSFET in the package intended to be mounted on a PCB. The second is comprised of three groups that have varying degrees of integration into the package itself. The power QFN family or PQFN family in production today is generally multiple MOSFETs and a controller in a QFN outline. The mid power integration group may involve this plus additional passive components. In the high power module arena, we go from measuring things in millimeters to centimeters and might be bolted down as well as metallically bonding it to a, another interface. The graph of the markets is on the right hand side of the materials today. And you can see that the technologies overlap somewhat until you get to a high power. More on that later in the presentation. But the technology vectors for the discrete and integrated power are similar. Both want low resistance and inductance packaging. We see a trend towards dual sided cooling in both discrete and integrated packaging. And there's always a strong push to reduce form factor in order to miniaturize and allow for efficient design of the controller and passives either into the package or on the PCB. These vectors leave some gaps in the power transistor offering today. High density packaging is needed and there are very little universal formats that can be used in both discrete and integrated solutions. In the materials I'm showing now, you can see Amcor's current power packaging solutions separated by both interconnect and package outline. So what I've got on the right hand side of the slide is all the different ways that we interconnect the die to the outside world. And on the left hand side, I've got all the different package formats typically for discrete and integrated uh, parts, ranging everything from a high power IGBT uh, all the way down through the discrete fa package families, and then also uh, a multi-chip module and a power QFM format on the bottom. All of these technologies we drew from to create our chip scale power packaging concept. Just making the devices larger in mass and in size to adapt to new performance objectives will not work eventually. If we base performance on size and mass, this would be disruptive to the system implementation and go against longstanding objectives of smaller, better, faster, and cheaper. Silicon carbide and gallium nitride wide band gap materials will push packaging density due to their figure of merit higher operating temperature, and the need to have low loss packaging that complements the die capabilities. When we look at several packaging types in production today, we see that for both small and large body discretes, there seems to be this ceiling of about 30% total volume of copper within the package. Some are way below that number. If we we're to reduce the form factor, we must be able to increase the density of conductive material in the package itself. A traditional approach to addressing power density and packaging might be to look at the three main elements within the package. First, we might continue down the path of providing dual sided discrete packages where we're using the top and the bottom package for both electrical and thermal conductivity. We could use things like ultra heavy copper wire to maximize the current carrying capability from the package to the die itself. Or we might be able to use centering die attach paste to maximize the thermal conductivity of the package. 
when we looked at the design and the application base for power transistor packaging, we thought we might have a different way of approaching this. Remember that the key questions from the beginning were, is it possible to significantly increase the density of the package? And why can't we remove several of the interfaces in the design to make it less complicated? Our design and development methodology was to actually accomplish one by using the other. We created a simplified architecture for MOSFET packaging by removing several interfaces. Instead of having wires or clips carry signals and current between die and lead frame, then lead frame to package, PowerCSP has no wire or clip, and one side of the package will be bonded directly to the PCB source. This allows for a maximum conductivity between the elements of the package and allows us to increase the conductive material in the package to 30 to 70 percent. Remember earlier when I took a broad look at the entire uh, package offering today, very few got above 30 percent and many were much below that. Flexibility of design is key to being able to serve a broad application base. Options within the PowerCSP family are attachment of a heat spreader directly to the PowerCSP. We can use a wide variety of materials for connecting the die to the current carrying surface. And we can isolate either the top or the sides of the package with mold compound. We can also add wettable flank options for enhanced board level requirements. The design also allows for a simplified assembly process concentrating around die attach, mold, and simulation. The design is scalable to emulate current sizes or create new ones based on the application. Lastly, the design is applicable to both discrete and modular designs. I'll talk a little bit about that in the future. We also looked into how we might adapt our architecture so that we could address specific pinouts or configurations for the source, gate, and drain. There are many configurations for chip scale power using the power CSP. We could, for instance, use a thick lead frame uh, to further increase the conductive density of the package. We could add a secondary heat sink, as seen earlier. We could use both single and multi-sided terminals. Uh, we could use exposed or covered packages if there's an isolation uh, concern. And we can use an inter internal gate option with the use of a routable lead frame. The slide I'm showing right now shows how that design might look if we cross-sectioned it at various parts in the package. So ultimately, these would generally be referred to as a QFN outline, uh, meaning it's somewhat cubic in nature, uh, of course, thinner on the uh, Z, Z direction than the X or Y. Um, it's atta at, attached to the printed circuit board using surface mount technology. And there's optional uh, heat sink mounting on the top of the package uh, if someone wanted to add that after the fact or during our assembly process, which I'll show in a moment. As I stated earlier, the process flow for power CSP is very simple. It concentrates on the die attach step, the mold step, and a simulation step. So conceivably, uh, it is much easier to produce than a traditional package that involves a clip or, or a wire. We also show options here for adding uh, a heat sink to the package and also being able to do a wettable flank. After we explored the freedom of design that PowerCSP gave us, we had to look at how the package performed. We looked at temperature, our thermal and electrical performance of the package. Uh, what you're looking at now is the temperature profile results from a model that we created that inputted 10 watts and we used a heat sink that we would normally use, say, with some of our dual-sided cooling packages. These are the same packages that I referred to earlier in the presentation. You can see that the large volume package uh, performs very well uh, in a thermal environment. As we get smaller and less dense, then we also see a degradation in the thermal performance. The three on the right-hand side are all three 
uh, power CSPs with either just the power CSP, the power CSP with the heat sink, and then a very large power CSP with the heat sink at the same size as the ED2 pack in the upper left hand corner. Those two are very similar in performance when we look at this model and look at the temperature profile of the package. Thermally, we expected large body and mass packaging to have an advantage. However, power CSP junction temperature was below all other package types in our model, which focused on removing the heat through the top of the package. Dual sided packaging certainly has an advantage and conductive density certainly has an effect on the package thermal performance. For small and dense packages in the 30% conductive density range, Power CSP had a lower junction temperature in a 10 watt application according to the model. Large mass packaging still has an advantage, but this might be closed rapidly with a better performing thermal interface material and a heat sink in the end application. What I have in the graph is a plot of the package volume uh, with a yellow line and then the junction temperature for each of the packages in a blue or a green line in the case of power CSP. You'll see that for the small packages, power CSP outperforms with regards to junction temperature than the others. It's only slightly beat by uh, the large mass packaging in the ED2 pack as shown in the graph. Of course, we are curious if pushing the package density would also yield beneficial electrical results. We characterized power CSP against the same group of packages mentioned earlier, so we had a sampling of both large and small packages, fairing density, and different interconnect types for each of the packages. We found that power CSP was the lowest resistance of the group by far, and that it had significantly lower inductance. Capacitance was best in class, but some packages came very close to power CSP. This was expected with a dense structure, the removal of those interfaces, and a direct connection to the printed circuit board. What we did not expect was that the die attached material conductivity had very little effect on the results. Solder, hybrid, and sinter materials all performed well in the model. So based on the results of our thermal and electrical evaluations of power CSP, we end up with a very small form factor package that has a very low RDS on value, and it leads to embedded options as shown in the lower right, which I'll begin to talk about in the next few slides. In the very beginning of my program, I shared several integration areas of interest. Here, I'll separate this into two areas, low to mid and then high power applications. In high power applications, these are traditionally custom packaging that is large, involves an overmolded lead frame, and typically has highly engineered substrates and cooling solutions. In the low to mid power area, there are several paths to take depending on what is needed. There are many power QFN derivatives today, including multiple die in stacked or side-by-side -side configurations, and eventually integration of path passes within or on top of the power QFN. Using a large format here will increase complexity in assembly, but is a viable option in the future if thermals and routing can be handled. Embedded solutions have been offered for mobile apps for some time, but are now being targeted to power that use a mixture of RDL and substrate technologies. Using a dual-sided module for power applications may have value since they are already commonly used across several end applications such as mobile, connectivity, and computing. I consider these two paths divergent because one aims to reduce the form factor and the other aims at increasing the performance and efficiency with very customized and sometimes very large solutions. On the right hand side you see an example of a high power module. Uh, this one might be found in your Toyota Prius if you drive one today. And they're typically very large body, uh, greater than 50 millimeters. Uh, they have an over molded lead frame 
and they have very specialized thermal substrates. On the low to mid power on the left, we've got power QFNs, power QFN de derivatives, embedded structures, and then dual-sided modules, all serving a purpose to distribute power uh, effectively and in a reduced form factor while still integrating many different forms of silicon and the and passives within the package. Within the PQFN and PIMIC arena, we can see some trends in the future by integrating one or more inductors or passives onto or into the PQFN package using the copper clip as the interface. In a format where more I.O. and routing is needed, a module might be able to be used where there is a need for a form factor reduction, and we could use some key design principles and take advantage of SIP structures with something like a power CSP. I'll share this concept in detail later in the program. One of the other areas that we can investigate or possibly use is growing the size of the power QFN using the same types of technology we use today. Uh, in this case, I'm talking about maybe growing the power QFN to three times our current size. So typically we might have five or six millimeters on a side today, maybe going to 15 or 20 millimeters on a side. We would use exposed pads for passive integration in this case, a thicker copper substrate, copper clip and wire or flip chip. Uh, and the downside is manufacturing wise, this creates many die attached steps and thermal starts to be an issue as we trade off uh, the IO density for the conductive density. Take a minute now to explore how we might use power CSP in an integrated power circuit. When we look at a simple half bridge circuit, the benefits of integrating in this way are illustrated well. The key design feature in the circuit is the inductor pathway from the source of one MOSFET and the drain of another MOSFET. Using power CSP in this example shows that the line inductance is minimized and simplified by orientation and location of the power CSP within the module. Power CSP technology can also serve as known good die in this case. Because the device can be tested individually like any other package or in gang form to benefit from strip level testing. In this case, the designer can have a thick copper only where it's needed instead of a uniform thick copper across the entire layer if it's embedded or other structures created using very thick copper throughout the module. With the coming advancements in power applications, it's important for the packaging technology to keep pace. Low resistance, low inductance packaging advancements must keep up with the needs of wide band gap devices in the future. Form factor reduction will push us to increase the conductive density of the packaging beyond the current levels we have today. All these advancements must serve both discrete and integrated applications. Our design and development methodology sought to challenge our abilities to increase the package conductive density and to simplify the architecture for both applications. Power CSP offers a chance to be both scalable and capable of meeting a wide variety of power applications in the future. Thank you for allowing me to share our advancements in power transistor packaging. I think that if we all keep asking the questions, wouldn't it be cool if, and why can't we, we'll be able to innovate and keep pace with the market. For more information on power CSP or any other packaging needs, you can contact me at the email shown. Have a good day and stay healthy, everybody.